Hello everyone, Joanne with StampingInTheValley.com and welcome to my craft room this weekend. Today I'm going to play with the Country Home Stamp Set and we're going to do some coloring. Here's the card that I designed with it. I love it. I love that artichoke. I love artichokes um, from when I was a kid. I just absolutely love them. Then I love this tiled embossing folder. Okay, I did a little inking on there with some rich razzleberry. I really like the effect. Beautiful. I colored, of course, with Stampin' Blends. Love the Stampin' Blends. And then the inside of the card, I did a little something different on the inside of the card. I put an embellishment in there. I made that from the stamp set. So grateful for someone like you in my life. And I'm grateful for every one of you every weekend in my life. I really am. And I used the... Um, stamp that is coordinates with this tile. It, it's almost like the tile, but it uh, it reminds me of the tile. It's that type of look. Okay, so I used that and I used it on the envelope. Now, if you order $25 in product from me, these are the two free card kits for this month. You will receive these card kits in the mail. No stamped images. Please check the video below. It will tell you all about it and use the host code, okay? The host code is going to, at the beginning of this video, if you place an order, please use the host code. Also, if you order the Alpine Adventure Bundle, you will receive these two free card kits also. You'll get both, okay, if you get the Alpine because um, of the price. Um, you will get both card kits. This is what I'm calling Kickstart to Your Bundle Kit. This will help you to start to use your product. Again, I cannot send stamped images, but we can. I can use the DSP and all of the framelits that come with it. But these are exclusive card kits. The video will come to you in your email only if you place the order of the Alpine C or Alpine Adventure uh, with that. And that email comes to your, or I'm sorry, that video comes to your email exclusively. And it's a little bit different. Um, it helps you to use your bundle. Things are not cut out for you. The pieces are there, but um, you actually use your big shot and cut it out. So needless to say, let's get on with this card. Uh, we're going to start with a base of Rich Razzleberry. And it's 11 by 4 and a quarter, scored at 5 and a half. It opens just like this. Now, on one of my last videos last weekend, I asked if you guys wanted dimension over on my website. So I will be posting all of the dimensions that I used. And then there will be a product list also um, at... Uh, stampinginthevalley.com and you can see all of the products, all their pictures, all their numbers, and all their prices on the product list on my website. So we're going to use this as the card base. I'm using a piece of, um, what was this? Smoky Slate. Uh, I used right here and ran it through the Big Shot with this beautiful dynamic textured embossing folder with the tiles, okay? The one secret that I want to tell you, especially with these dynamic folders, when you feed them through your Big Shot, make sure you go spine first, okay? So a little tip there, make sure you go spine first, and this line here is just not to make the Stampin' Up! logo look great or stand out, but it does, but it also <laughs> helps us to line our paper up inside this uh, um, emboss embossing folder. So I think that's another great added uh, little thing from Stampin' Up! So I ran that through the big shot, and this is what I got. And we're going to go ahead and do some inking on this first. I'm going to bring in just some, this is just some scrap paper. We'll use it like this. And I have one, a little sponge. And again, you all of these items will be over at stampinginthevalley.com. And you can um, make your list that you would like to order and place your order there. Okay, so you just tap, tap into your ink. And then I want you to take your sponge and almost get it like almost where you think there's no ink on it. Then apply it to your paper in a circular motion and just work it down this beautiful tiled embossing folder. Isn't this gorgeous, guys? Oh my goodness. And because it's dynamic, it's really, really um, impressioned, okay? 
really has a nice deep impression. So I'm just coming around. Now I know I'm going to put my element inside of this, so I'm not going to ink inside right here. I'm just kind of coming around and using this sponge. Now, let me talk to you about these sponges while we're doing this. They come in a whole round disc, okay? You'll see you'll see the product over there at my website. Um, and they you can cut these up. This is cut like a pie. I cut it into six slices. And I get these most wonderful sponges. Look at that. They have a great um, handle that is already kind of created when you cut it. I think they're fantastic, um, especially to do something like this with. So right here, I'm done with that part. Let me come down here just a little bit more just to even out some color. And then I definitely want to flick around the edges. This is called flicking, and that's what you do. You flick, and I want it dark because I want it to stand out so I'm going to really get those edges. I really want that straight edge covered. Nice and dark here. So notice that when I'm doing this, I'm not rubbing it into the paper, okay? I want it full strength when I'm doing something like this. And as you can see, this gives us a beautiful effect on this tile of it kind of just kind of fading into and the color going away. So that's beautiful. We're going to bring our card base in. And those are the old style um, stamp pads. If you order ink, you will get the new style stamp pads. Um, now with this, you want to use some Tombow because you are so embossed. So you want to add your Tombow here. I was just talking to a customer of, of mine this morning, and um, we were talking about how Tombow, no matter how much you shake it, something comes out, okay? It's like it's never-ending glue. So <laughs> you shake, shake, and here comes some more. That's funny. So I'm going to apply this right here, and then we're going to work with our coloring. Just like that. Now, this piece right here is five and a quarter by four. So it's cut down a quarter of an inch from the outside dimension, which gives us an eighth of an inch border. When I cut something down an eighth of an inch, it, or a quarter of an inch, it gives us an eighth of an inch border. Because, you know, you're taking it up on either side, okay? Okay, so I'm kind of pressing this down because I want that Tombow to really adhere. Okay. Now, our next two pieces, this is Rich Razzleberry, and it's three and an eighth by four and an eighth, and this is regular Whisper White, three by four. Again, the dimensions will be over at Stampin' in the Valley. So, uh, let's get our foam mat, and we're going to stamp on our Whisper White because we have photopolymer stamps. And we're going to use this container right here. I love that. Like, um, it's like a milk uh, container or jug or something. And then we're going to use the cornucopia here or the um, foliage that has the artichoke in it. I love artichokes, guys. And because we're going to color with blends, we're going to use some Memento Black ink. From when I was a kid, my mom would make artichokes and um, just delicious. I want to start with the top of this because I want to make sure I have enough room. Makes me want to go get some right now and fix them. <laughs> so I'm really inking this up with my Memento Black ink. And I'm going to come right over this and kind of centered. And I'm just going to stamp just like that. I'll use my chamois in a minute on that. And I want to take my um, pitcher or milk jug or I don't know, farmhouse jug there. And I want to put it right under here, but kind of touching this right here. I want it to touch this right here so that it looks like these are coming out of 
the canister. Okay. Try to get right up on that. Hope for the best. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That came out perfect. Look at that, guys. Isn't that lovely? That is just beautiful. Okay. Close my ink. Okay. Now, on the bottom here, the little canister, I used my um, light and dark smoky slate. So I used my brush tip. And I decided to, in the smaller areas, to put the dark smoky slate. And then in the larger areas, put the light. So I just allowed my, these are alcohol markers, guys, so they bleed just a little bit. I am barely applying any pressure. And I'm just kind of stroking across this jug in this one color, just like this. Okay, and just color it in. Because they're alcohol, whoop, I went outside the lines. Did you see that right there? Let me show you how to fix that right quick. We have, this is a color lifter marker from the Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna use my little brush tip and I'm going to go ahead and pull that color. It will pull that color right out of there. And we're going to be good to go on that. Okay, that'll dry as we are working with the rest of it. Beautiful. So, okay, uh, let's go into the dark right here. And I'm going to let you see this contrast right here. And I'm not shading anything. I'm just using the colors as they are with this project. Just like that. And then right here, this little area of the container. Just like that. So the gray is going to shade itself with having just the dark around it. If you can, you know, it almost looks weathered. Yeah, and that's the look that I'm kind of going for. Like this little uh, container has been outside. And then we're going to use a little granny apple green. I love granny apple green. So the light comes up here. That was my new color that I got in my last order. I want to come right around here. Every order I try to either get new ink with paper or some new Stampin' Blends. This way, you know, it's kind of like not a big financial hit. Um... So I just get a little bit at a time. And I but I do get when I get the blends, I get the double pack because that's really the most economical way to purchase them. Which you need the light and the dark, you know, I think. Um, okay, so I'm going to use the light, granny apple green, on my handles and my rim here. Just like that, just letting it have some accent to let the little container, then that make that little container stand out, guys. Isn't that pretty? Very pretty. And I love to color with these blends. So let's talk about the artichoke. An artichoke is um, a green leafy vegetable, okay? I'm going to use my light. Stampin' Blends, and I'm going to see the little tops of the artichokes here, the, the little leaves part. I'm going to leave some of that blank because then I'm going to go in with my rich razzleberry to top these off. If you've ever seen these things in the grocery store, um, they do have a little purple to them. So I thought that I would try to mimic that with these markers. So I'm going to go in with the light, okay, um, Rich Razzleberry, and just give these little guys tips. 
and I thought it came out so stinking cute. I felt like I was in the produce department. Just like that. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. I missed one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and tip it first. It's the most wonderful thing about coloring. You can just change colors. Nothing has to be written in stone. Nothing has to be exact. It could just be what it is. Just because it's crafting and you're coloring and that is just what's fun about it. I think we've got that pretty good now. Let's see, maybe right there, that little, little bit. Yeah. So you just kind of look at it and play with it. And then the, uh, well, I don't want that end. Okay. The other one, let me see. I've got to get up closer. Okay. Right here. Okay. Now this I did use a light crumb cake. Let me get that. Let's see, what is this? This is dark. Let's use the dark on this one. Yeah, I like that. Makes it stand out just a little bit better. Use the dark crumb cake right here. Oh, I like that. And now the dark rich razzleberry on all of our berries here. Just like this. Just in these little dots. Now, the I'm going to do light granny apple green. On all of these little twigs right here, this is a light granny apple green, just like this. And that goes very fast, okay? We're not going to do the rest of that on camera. This right here, um, what I did was I kind of wanted tones, but I didn't want to blend them in a small area. So the lower leaves I did like a dark granny apple green, and the upper ones I did a light granny apple green. So I just want to show you how to do that. I'll get off camera. I'll finish. I want to show you the difference between the two colors. Just like that. And then even in here, I did a little of the rich razzleberry. Just because. Just because I wanted to. And down here just a little bit. Okay, so look at this contrast, and then let me just finish this part up. This right here I did with a light granny apple green, just to show you this contrast a little bit. And again, I see I came out of the line a little bit. Get my, just right there. Okay, so right here. As you can see, that's the way that I'm shading. The lower leaves I'm letting being darker, and then the ones that kind of pile up on top of them lighter, using my Rich Razzleberry. I'll be right back, and we'll put this card together. Fun to color with you guys today. Okay, this came out beautifully. I am so happy with this. I really love this stamp set. It's just a fun, it's just a stamp set. You can, you know, it doesn't have the framelits with it. You can fussy cut this. You can um, use your circle, oval, square stitched framelits or your or the regular stitched framelits to embellish something like this. I just, I'm so happy with these, with how pretty this looks today. <laughs> so, so we're going to attach this onto our rich razzleberry now if you order from me and you're a new customer I will send you a brand new catalog okay and I will send you um, the annual and the um, holiday catalog okay for free so 
Now I'm going to put my little thanks. I, I'm doing that in Memento Black Ink. Let me make sure I'm nice and inked up there. I'm out of thank you cards, so I need to make thank you cards. So I put my thanks in there. Okay. Now that beautiful card base that we did before, we are just going to pop this up with dimensionals. Oh, just adorable. Really, really love this card. Just like this. I put one in the middle because of the size so we don't have any bounce in the card and it won't bow over a period of time. Let's remove these little backs right here. And it makes it. It just absolutely makes that. The tiles, I love this. I The, the whole thing, I just really love the whole thing. Okay, now, let's see. I'll be back in a minute and we're going to put the inside together. Okay, so we're going to complete the card with the inside. This piece is four and three quarter by three and a half. And um, I, I love this size for the inside. I I've always liked that um, size. So I'm going to take my Rich Razzleberry and my stamp that has, it almost mimics the tile a little bit. And I'm going to stamp it on the bottom and on the top. Okay. I missed that a little bit there. Let's go on to the other side. So I'm going to ink this up. I really should have my foam mat. There we go. That's better. And just like that. Okay. That's good. Now, let's close this up. And now we're going to bring in our element right here. I've already stamped that. I love this. So grateful for someone like you in my life. And this is cut out of the circle framelits. And this is a circle stitch framelit. And they layer together beautifully. This is a nice way, if you're new at crafting, the, the stitched framelits, the circle, the square, and the oval framelits. They are a great way to start. You can make all kinds of embellishments with those shapes, just like that. And I'm going to attach that right here, but with snail. We're not going to pop this up with dimensionals because we're on the inside of the card. Okay. And I just got the idea to make an embellishment for the inside of this card. I don't know why. It just, I just did it. So that's awesome. And let me just stamp this envelope real quick while I've got everything out. Just going to put a tile down in the corner and a tile on the back. I'm calling them tiles. I don't know. We're almost finished. So, oh my goodness, this is so pretty. I love the Granny Apple Green with the Rich Razzleberry. Nice um, deep colors, nice, color, nice fall colors, right guys? I can't believe it's fall. I'm a real summer person. So right in here. Nice. I love a thicker border on the inside of the card. Thanks so much for watching today. And here, oh wait, we forgot the, um, the I put some little sequins on here. It needed just a little something something. And I'm using my tool, I, oh, please, this spatula, where have you been all my life? Okay, all of my crafting life, where have you been? I'm in love with the spatula. So a little sequence right there, just to give it a little something, something on the outside of that container. And here we go. Okay, this is the first one for this weekend. Thanks so much for watching. Now here I use the light crumb cake on the cattails, and here I use the dark. I really love them both. Pretty card. Thanks again for watching guys and happy crafting.